Hi, welcome to our stats. I'm Jacob Sibulski. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to some predictive statistical models, such as naive base and regression, with plenty of data visualization. Welcome back to our stats. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to impute missing values in data. Imputation means simply finding and replacing of missing values. The data set that we're going to use comes from the UCI machine learning repository and this is the URL of this data set. Uh, the data comes with lots of missing values and they're all coded as question marks uh, in the CSV file. Uh, we will be looking at using naive base classification of the data in this data set and focus on the intention of academics to use Wikipedia uh, in the teaching and recommending Wikipedia to colleagues and students. Uh, I, will, I will explain the data set gradually uh, when I load the data. Uh, so let's set the working directory. I'm going to rely on three libraries, psych, caret, and misc, which will be used to um, present data in correlation matrices, uh, to use cross-validation and uh, to present confusion matrices, and to impute missing values. Let's read the data in, and the data is semicolon separated, and the missing values in the data are question marks which I can eliminate straight away at this point. The question is of course that we should not be having missing values when we load the data into analytics packages. They should have been eliminated before either having a proper uh, process uh, in data collection or using some other packages specializing in improving quality of data. But this is the fact of life. Um, we have missing values here, we need to deal with them. So uh, one of the first variables is uh, BI2 in this data set. Uh, let me show you the data in there very quickly. You can see we have data about people age and gender, uh, the department they work in, whether or not they have a PhD, years of experience, which university they work in. It's all numerically coded and we have a lot of values and A, missing values. Some are individual spots in the data sum, a lot of missing data in each column. I'm going to read all those variables one by one and I'm going to do it in two stages because there's a lot of missing values. What I'm going to show is not how it went. I normally added uh, variables, uh, small lots at a time, maybe three or four at a time, uh, look at them, consider the dependencies, remove dependencies, remove variables and progress very slowly, often building the models in the process, testing the models and going back. Um, I'm going to show you as if, as if magic happened and I knew with a huge foresight what variables to be used. So that will be misleading, keep it in mind that did not happen that way. So let's read age and gender, the department they work in, whether or not they have PhD, the years of experience, the university they worked in, the position at one or the other university. I can see that um, those two variables with lots of missing values will be there because they either work here or there. That will be quite misleading for the, uh, for the machine learning method. Uh, the status at one or the other university, with another use Wikipedia at this point. Now we have survey questions which are coded um, in five um, as five possible answers starting from strongly disagree, disagree, being neutral, agree or strongly agree. So we have values from one to five in there whether or not people believe Wikipedia is easy friendly, easy to find information, is easy to edit, easy to use by students, does it improve learning, is useful in teaching, stimulating, entertaining, information is reliable and up-to-date and comprehensive, or whether or not it's low quality, or whether people trust the editors. 
let's put all those variables into a data frame so it's easy to manipulate as one lot. Ah, it looks like I missed the variable at the very, be very beginning. I forgot to send it in. So let's quickly create a data frame. Now it's better. And I'm going to produce a correlation matrix. The problem is that most of the data is not continuous numerical variables and that means the standard correlation method is not applicable. So I'm using a Spearman's method or Spearman's method um, which relies non-parametric um, methods of determining association between variables. It simply assumes the variables have ordinal values. That means the values are ordered in some way and this is the case whether we talk about the age of the people the position in a hierarchy or uh, the answer to the questions from strongly disagree to agree. Now um, what you see on the right hand side is the most compact way of presenting correlation matrices. Um, let's look at a larger version of that and you can see that a lot of uh, variables are highly intercorrelated. You can see dark blue patches or dark red patches and some variables have very little impact on our target such as age, gender, domain, PhD, yes, age, gender, domain, PhD and others. So this column indicates that those variables have very little correlation with the target. So potentially I could eliminate them and that's what I'm going to going to do next. I eliminate variables which I consider not promising or those which are heavily dependent or associated with other predictors. have many fewer and if I produce this correlation plot again I should have a much better picture. Okay, let's add the next half of the variables which is not what happened. I was adding it two or three at a time. Let's add it to the previous matrix and do the next correlation plot and we'll see more dark blue patches and possibly dark red patches which means that the variables which come in groups um, which should be considered for elimination. Of course, the question is, if we have so many missing variables, does it obscure the picture? And indeed it does. Um, so that also means that I should be eliminating missing values or incorrect values beforehand because the whole process is open to error um, when we have those missing values. Um, so, however, here, since we don't know any um, ways of quickly determining correlations with missing values and we haven't done it before. Let's rely on our intuition and some knowledge outside R. So um, I have identified a number of candidates for deletion and I'm left with now fewer variables which will give me a nice and pretty picture of variables which potentially impact the willingness of people to use Wikipedia in teaching. And this will be a variable such that Wikipedia is useful in teaching, is considered to be reliable, it's well considered at academics universities, other colleagues use it, and they currently use Wikipedia in developing teaching materials. So that looks like they are pertinent variables. The first thing I'm going to do is um, to convert my target variable into a categorical variable, a factor in R. And two ways of doing it. We could leave with the fact that um, the target variable has five possible classes, one, two, three, four, five, or we could reduce this number of classes and that usually increases the accuracy of the resulting model. I'm going to do the second part and usually I will test both. 
let's look at the summary of all variables um, which are considered here. They all have a number of missing values and A's. Some of them have a, have a lot of missing values, considering that we're dealing with 920 observations. So that's about 5% uh, of missing values. Worse is that the target variable has missing values, which means if we train the model with missing values, we're having a bit of a problem here. Um, we should not be training the model with missing values in the target. We don't know what are the poten potential answers. We could either convert those missing values to I don't know, um, but it's probably best to remove them. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm actually replacing that whole column. I'm actually deleting all rows where there are missing values or picking the rows without missing values and creating a new data frame, a subset of it. For all the remaining ones, I'm relying on impute function um, where I'm going to replace missing values in that column with a median. And later in the script at the end, I'll show you how to do exactly the same without relying on any particular package. So replacing all missing values, let's have a summary table. You can see we don't have NAs in any of those variables, which is good news. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to create naive base model with cross-validation, but I'm going to rely on honest testing. That means I'm going to set aside about 25% of data for testing after we done validation of the model, creation validation of the model. So finding the size of the sample, finding the size for training and testing, getting a set of indices, a sample of indices from the original data and extracting data for training and testing into separate uh, data frames. Now I'm ready to do the cross validation and I'm using the carrot package for that. Setting the seed, the starting point, if I want to repeat it ever again. Um, defining the training control to be cross validation with 10 paths, one tenth will be used for testing, for validation, and nine tenths for uh, training of the model. And this is done repetitively 10 times. I was experimenting with different options for naive base, so I created tune read. Um, Whereas I use a test with Laplace value 0 and 1 and with kernel methods, which is an alternative way of implementing naive base in um, vector space. And now creating a train and training the model, uh, indicating that we'll use wiki is my target variable. The method is naive based. Whoops, I clicked control, naive base. And um, let's look at the model. The model shows that the accuracy is 65%. And the kappa, which is a more conservative assessment of accuracy, considering the distribution of values in each variable, is around 47%. This is actually not bad, considering that when I started with my group of variables, heavily interdependent and uh, variables which had missing values, we started well below 30%, which means it was completely random. Now, the final thing is to check, to do a test, honest test on the model, testing it on my test sample, and the confusion matrix says that <clears throat> on the test sample, the accuracy was virtually the same as the accuracy in validation. And the kappa was actually increased. So that's good news for my model development. I could possibly use it in practice. But before that, I should really look at back at my process of assigning missing values, which was quite... Uh, rudimentary. I should be looking at distribution of values in each and look at whether some other non-missing variables could help me determining exactly the missing value. Uh, that's done in more powerful packages, more powerful methods of imputing missing values.
Also, I should be looking at using a different learning algorithm, such as neural network. But I'll talk about that in the future. Thank you.